I wanted to take some time to talk about navigating anxiety and <sighs> what that can look like. There are so many things for our nervous systems to process. And when they are constantly stimulated and on overload, um, it can build up a lot of tension in the body. And that can start in different areas, but tension almost inevitably um, causes our core to kind of freeze and the muscles around our spine to tighten, which can compress our nerves even further. And so it becomes imperative to learn how to work with that tension in order to allow anxiety to move through you. And what you will learn is that we don't get rid of anxiety but we learn to welcome it as a messenger, that we are um, receiving too much stimulation of whatever kind, and that we need to draw our energy back in and recenter, make sure that we're grounded and allowing movement through our bodies. And this is where therapies like yoga and acupuncture biofeedback and meditation are all really helpful because they're increasing awareness in our bodies of those areas that are not functioning well. Either the nervous system is just starting to dysregulate and we're experiencing some discomfort or some pain starting to build or maybe we're even at the point where it's numb and that can be internally as well in our hearts, in our guts, our intuition can be frozen. Um, and our diaphragm, our breath can be locked either on an inhale or an exhale. And so figuring out where those blockages are and working with them can be a great tool to help create a channel or a space for the anxiety to move through. Because anxiety is, is an emotion and emotions like to move we think of energy and motion. Um, you know, it's fine to store emotions if we can't process them right at that moment. But if we let them sit for too long, um, it's like having a um, like a tumor, right? Like a physical tumor will block flow. In the same way, um, an energetic blockage can really restrict um, our ability to have a complete circuit of energy along whatever pathway is flowing through that area. And that can escalate and cascade into multiple pathways, into multiple areas of the body. Um, a lot of times with anxiety, um, we'll be ungrounded literally um, through our kidney channel in the bottom of our feet it won't connect fully and this happens a lot when we have um, pelvic tension uh, chronic pelvic tension for whatever cause can keep our nervous system from being able to ground um, and can cause up a static charge that is very uncomfortable 
and that can cause inflammation, which then rises because we know that heat rises and it can irritate our lungs and our heart. It can dry out our tissues. And so we'll get fluid kind of stuck and blocking in our pelvis and our legs and we'll get heat rising up, causing irritability and palpitations. And so we need to reverse that. We need to allow the heat to circulate so that it can circulate fluids and nourish our bodies so that our blood doesn't stagnate in our legs causing varicose veins and spider veins and other blockages. And so that our heart can get that warm, juicy energy that our kidneys send up. And so there are lots of techniques that can help with all of this. Uh, but I think what is most important is to use techniques that you can integrate throughout the day because um, especially in a challenging time like this, waves of anxiety can come through the day or a particularly strong wave can come and last for quite a while. So you'll want to use whatever you choose to use consistently and regularly, uh, you know, as many times as you need switching it up if you need um, if you need advice or support in how to switch up your routine your anxiety routine just let me know I've got a lot of tools and techniques and wisdom but really the first place I go is to my breath because so often with anxiety we're holding our rib cage very tight um, we're not allowing an expansion and a contraction we're stuck in between and so just expanding and contracting a little bit can be enough to start that process. Um, if you're holding a lot of grief, just that little bit of movement might initiate a, an emotional response and that's okay. Just make sure you're in a safe place and allow yourself to as fully as possible feel the expansion and then feel the release and the contraction. And with the ribs, you'll get a contraction and expansion, or excuse me, contraction and release of muscles both directions, um, which makes it an especially sacred movement um, because when we have a simultaneous contraction and release, that's like a little orgasm in itself, or it can be if our nervous system is turned on enough, literally and figuratively. Um, so finding that space in the expansion and in the release, um, in the in-breath and the out-breath, where you're feeling a really deep, beautiful contraction of one set of muscles and a release in the other set. See if you can feel that difference. Um, and it might take a long time, but keep trying because I guarantee there is an infinite amount of bliss in that space. So just breathing to start, getting air in your lungs and pushing air out. Whatever that looks like for you. If it's you know, a three count breath in and a three count breath out, then that's a great place to start. As you go through, maybe the next day you try a four count breath in, holding for one or two counts, and then a four count breath out. Whatever you can do to progress in a way that feels best for your body and that doesn't stimulate more anxiety or stress. And another really amazing breathing technique to help get energy moving and release a lot of deep tension is a deep sigh or a lion's breath. And I recommend a deep sigh if people are feeling especially low energy or feeling really stuck. Um, lion's breath is great. It's a little more forceful. So um, if you're feeling up for it, then go ahead and do it. But deep sighing is a great place to start. And it's really simple, just taking a deep breath in and letting it come out. And it can be soft to start and a gentle breath in and sigh out. 
Um, and as you feel more confident and more um, engaged with your breath, more inspired, you can begin to make it more active. You can inhale and lift your shoulders up, contracting the muscles that run along your shoulders and up into your neck. You can even squeeze them together at the top and massage a little bit. Rub your neck gently as long as it doesn't hurt your neck. And then we can drop our shoulders down as we're sighing and let them bounce a little bit. And that will start to wake up the nervous system in the chest to relieve a lot of that tension, um, especially that's kind of in our armpits and down on the sides of our ribs because we tend not to do a lot with that area. And that area has a lot of lymphatic um, tissue and a lot of um, fluid that can build up, a lot of tension that can build up. So um, either you know, massaging gently or doing a lot of bouncing, things like that will get the fluid and the energy moving uh, in this area, which is the meeting place of our heart. Um, so our external heart circuit goes through our armpit and the meeting of the gallbladder. And um, when the heart and the gallbladder where they meet is really um, congested, um, it can indicate some lymphatic issues, um, chest congestion, but it can also show that we're having difficulty sleeping. We probably can't really get comfortable. Um, so working this area can be great for helping support sleep as well as breath work, um, as well as our lymphatics, which is important for our immune system. And um, in really just allowing energy to move through the heart channel, which goes from the heart, out the armpit, down kind of inside of the arm, through the palm, and out. So, um, how we can work with the heart meridian with acupressure is by tapping on our sternum, kind of under the collarbone and out. We're just gently, this is for lungs, heart, um, we have the stomach meridian here as well, the kidney meridian closer to the center, uh, the spleen more on the outside, and the lung here at the top. So we can actually stimulate a lot of meridians. And when we tap on the breastbone, we're working with the conception vessel, which goes um, all the way from our perineum up. So we can work with a lot of meridians just by gently tapping on the chest. We can pat as well, we can pat down the arm, just gently waking up. We can also press directly, finding any areas that are tender. If you work on your armpit, you just wanna be gentle, uh, especially if you're ticklish. If you're ticklish, that's a sign that there's congestion. So you just want to use a medium pressure and not push too hard. Um, and just getting in and finding any tender spots. There are a lot of nerves that run through here, so be gentle. Um, you can do that down the arm as well, just using your thumb, you can kind of pinching the triceps, focusing on any areas that are especially tender. Just don't push too hard because there are a lot of nerves. It's a delicate pathway. Um, you know, think about how tender your heart is feeling emotionally right now, and you want to be gentle with it emotionally as well as physically. So because we can't get in and directly massage our heart, we use primal movement exercises like bouncing. We use acupressure on the pathway um, that runs from the heart to the fingertip. Excuse me, fingertip. And, um, and we can also visualize that energy circulating. So we can visualize energy circulating um, in a microcosmic orbit uh, in like a golden egg shape from um, the front of our body to the back, either down the front and up the back or down the back and up the front. I like to go both ways. Um, different schools of thought have different ideas about what which one's better, but do both and, and see how it feels for you. When you come to a blockage or an area where you're not really feeling like that golden warmth moving through, just focus some extra attention on that area. It might be on a typical chakra area or it might be somewhere else. Uh, so you can do a golden egg. You can visualize that golden light going down the pathways and back again. You can visualize that energy grounding into the earth and drawing back up, maybe even in a larger egg. 
So there's a lot that we can do to get our energy flowing on multiple levels, um, energetically, emotionally, physically. The point is to get things moving. And whatever we can do to make that happen uh, will be helpful. So do it gently and consistently. Um, find some music that you can shake to and bounce to. Uh, you know, find some time to massage yourself or give yourself some acupressure. Take the time to remind yourself that even though there's a lot going on, that it, anxiety, what the anxiety that you're feeling is something that needs to move and flow and then it will be happy and flow out it might flow back but then you'll know what to do with it all right take a deep breath sigh it out shake and bounce tap caress Get some, uh, some plushies or softies or feather and help yourself to feel on many different levels. So if we, um, you know, get some silk and rub it along the channels that are struggling, um, get a flower and rub it along. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do to help yourself be in your body to make it easier to process emotions. So in my next video, I'm going to talk a little more about using pleasure to support um, being in our body and to help with emotional processing. So tune in then. If you have any questions in the meantime, just let me know.